Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Charles Boyer, Maureen O'Sullivan, and Alexis Smith in The Constant Nymph. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Emotion is the dynamo that makes life go on. Transferred to the footlights, it's the soul of good theater. And good theater does not depend upon war or peace. It has a timeless quality that lives beyond the moment. A quality that I believe you'll find tonight in The Constant Nymph. This moving love story was first a fine novel by Margaret Kennedy. Then the play captivated Broadway audiences in the roaring 20s. And now, in a world at war, the hit motion picture production from Warner Brothers Studio has proved that good drama is always up to date. In casting tonight's play, we naturally followed the lead of the picture and went hunting for Charles Boyer, who gave one of his best performances in The Constant Nymph. We also have the promising new Warner star, Miss Alexis Smith, from the picture cast. And rounding out a trio of stars, we've given one of the theater's prize roles to Maureen O'Sullivan. You know, there's more to our casting problem than the stars. We always fill even the smallest part with the best player we can find. Because with Lux Toilet Soap behind the production, the best is none too good. In the theater, it's teamwork that counts. And I believe that's true of every successful venture. Whether it's putting on a play for an audience of 30 million or making a soap for all those people. And Lux Toilet Soap did not happen by accident. A small army of scientists burned the midnight oil until they found some of the mysterious secrets of beauty. And there's always an air of mystery at curtain time. Now the first act of The Constant Nymph, starring Charles Boyer as Louis Dodd, Marino Sullivan as Tessa, and Alexis Smith as Florence. <laughs> Natural wonders of the Alp Mountains in Switzerland are world renowned. Less famous, but certainly no less wondrous, is the Sanger family, whose sprawling old chalet rests among the towering meadows high above the city of Zurich. Albert Sanger was a great composer before he started to dilute his genius in brandy. And like his music are his four daughters beautiful, simple, unrestrained, and at times a little hard to understand. The Sanger girls are often wildly excited. But this time, the cause is obvious. Roberto, the handyman, has just come back from town with a telegram. He's coming! He's coming! Lewis is coming! Hey, there's a telegram from Lewis! Oh, who's coming? Lewis Dodd! Lewis is coming! Where? Wednesday! It says Wednesday! But Wednesday's the day, Philly! He's coming today? Of course, today! Oh, oh, oh. Tessa, your hair's all wet! Oh, no, I've been in swimming, oh dear! Oh, get a ribbon! I can't, I've lost mine! Tony, give me yours! Oh, no, Betsy gave this to me, it's very expensive! Tony! Oh, no, don't you dare! Oh, oh, you! Oh, Kate, you make her give it back. Hush, let her have it. Fritzy gave you dozens. Oh, Fritzy's very rich. He owns ten theaters now. Tony, you going to marry Fritzy? Maybe I will and maybe I won't. Oh, silly geese, all of you. Hurry now. I'll get flowers. Huh? Roberto, Roberto, where's Lewis's Roberto? room. Oh, Kate, where's the broom? What if he comes before I'm through? No brooms for you, young lady. Just look at you. Lie down and rest. Oh, it's nothing, Kate. You're white as snow. Does it hurt you much, darling? It's just my heart does it. Funny thing. Oh, every time there's a little excitement. But it never hurts. Really, it doesn't. It just seems to jump around and make me breathe a little faster. See? It's all gone already. The first time we go to the village, we're seeing a doctor. No. I'll tell Lewis. Oh, no, 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 don't. I'll go. Honestly, I will. And Roberta will fix the room for Lewis, not you. You're awful. I know. Now get in the house and see if Father's awake. Tell him who's coming. He can have a little brandy, but mind you, with water. Father. Father, are you awake? Come in. Come in. It's only Tessa, Father. Uh, Roberto brought back the brandy. Yes, but I'm afraid you'll have to have a little water in it. Anyway, Lewis is coming. He's coming today. He sent us a telegram. Oh, yes, Lewis. I want to see Lewis. Father, would you tell me something? Mm hmm. Is Lewis a really fine composer? Mm, he has good technique, but he's like the weather. 
Today it thunders, tomorrow it is sunny. There's no blood in this music, no heart. If he could only cry, he should fall in love. If some woman could disturb him, why... I'm sure he's never loved a woman. Well, what I mean is if he could, well, suffer. What would make him suffer? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> There's something that happens to all of us. Father, I love Lewis. He's mine. That's nice. He is. He really is. Tell me, does uh, Lewis know about this? No. But one day he will, and then he'll look at me and he'll say, Darling, darling Tessa. And then everything will be all right. And you will probably faint. Into his arms. And he'll be very glad when he knows, because he needs someone like me. Someone he needs. Tessa! Yes. Tessa! 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 He's here! Lewis is here! Oh, I'm coming! I'm coming! Lewis! No. Lewis! There's no blood in his music. No heart. <laughs> Monkeys, all of you. Quiet, I'm very tired. I've traveled all day and I've eaten too much. Now, one at a time. You know, earlier tonight I said you were all going up like stinkweeds. Well, I was wrong. You haven't gone up at all. And since you are still children, please. Now, one at a time. Kate, the eldest. Well, you ask where Father's wife is. Oh, yes. What has happened to Madame Sanger? And I was about to tell you that she departed last week with a ballet teacher. Who staged the ballet from one of Father's operas? Father's very happy she's gone, so are we. Good. Miss Tony? Miss Tony's been in Zurich a whole week, meeting all the Berkovitz. Oh, Fritz's family? Maybe she'll marry Fritz, maybe not. Oh, he's so rich and nice. If only he were not such a little man. Well, both of those on being very big and only a little rich. They sir? You're tired, Louis. Maybe you want to go to bed. Ah, it is had a thoughtful one. Maybe I do. Yes. Oh, but first, what about Sanger? How has he been? Last week he said he was going to die soon. Maybe that's why he wanted you to come. Oh, nonsense. Uh, what has he written lately? Only the letter that brought you here. He's sick, Lewis. Really? And what have you written lately? I'll surprise you. This. A little song. Oh, oh. Lewis, you've been working. Oh, for the singers only. When I write for others, the critics cut me into little pieces. A song. Oh, let me see it. It's very simple, so you'll have no difficulty playing it. Hmm. The words. Oh, they're so sad. So unlike you. No comments. Learn it. Oh, Lewis, I almost forgot. Father said he would see you after dinner. And you wait until now to tell me. Well, practice the music now while I see your father. And the concert. And your concert in London. Well, as the English say, it flopped. It made them uncomfortable. And uh, what are you doing now? Nothing. Like me. I'm finished, Lewis. Oh, oh please, would you close the shutter? If that mountain out there could only be moved. Night, it breathes ice on me. The day, the sun blinds me. Where would you like it moved to? Over my grave. I'd like a mountain for a monument. <laughs> what would you print for an epitaph? Uh, let's just say, Albert Sanger, a useless old man. <laughs> no, no, rather, Albert Sanger, musician and genius. And then, if you like, I could add, he was also a useless old man. Lewis, it's coming soon. What's going to happen then to the girls? I, I'm helpless. I haven't got 20 pounds. Didn't Paula's and Tessa's mother have people in England? Oh, yes. Their mother was my second wife. When we ran off, her family disowned her. Hmm. There was a time when her brother Charles hunted us all over Europe. His idea was to shoot me on sight. After the children came, he seemed to give up the hunt and simply forgot us. Mm. And his brother is still alive? He's the sort that would be. But when it happens to me, Lewis, you might look him up. Charles Crichton. Very wealthy. Uh, get him to do something for the girl. He should go to school or somewhere. I know, I know. Wait. What is that music? Hmm? Oh, mine, I'm afraid. Something I bought for the girls. Nothing at all. Sugar, candy. You're ashamed of melody, aren't you? No, no, I simply have no gift for it. If you'd done that in London, you wouldn't have failed. Or if I could only make you understand. What would I make of such a theme? A love scene in an opera, a symphonic poem, anything. Oh, go away, Lewis. Go away. Uh, tell Roberto to bring me some brandy and... Uh, let me alone. <laughs> All right. Good night, Sanger. Hey, hey, your playing is terrible. Sanger said it was a very nice little piece. Oh, it's wonderful. Roberto, 
Si, signore. Brandy for the master. Si, signore. Sanger also said it would make a symphonic poem. Father's instincts are usually right. Well, let's try it again, shall we? You can get this. All right. Tessa, Tessa, wait. Hey, come back, Tessa. Oh. <laughs> Why did you run away like that? I don't know. Oh. Oh, it's quiet here, isn't it? Yes. Do you hear things in this kind of silence? What do you hear? Oh, this is where I think up my words. Oh, poison? No, just thoughts. Oh, I can't explain. Well, just tell me you want thoughts. Mm-hmm. You'd laugh. No, I wouldn't laugh. Well, there are so many things. Sad things, like your song. Oh, I'll not allow a single sadness to enter that head of yours. When I see dark things and sad things, I run away from them. And then you better run away from me. I could never run away from you. Really, Lewis? You're such a strange little baggage. Strangely innocent. I've got to talk to you. If you were mine, I would put you in a school. <laughs> I'm thinking for your good. <laughs> oh, I'm much too old. And besides, you don't shut people up in schools for their good. <laughs> Supposing I wanted to gaze up at the moon one night and find myself shut up in a dormitory full of pudding faces. <laughs> well, you shouldn't go moon gazing. <laughs> oh, well, I may go to school. I'm beginning to see points in it. But I shall always be thinking of you. No, no, you, you must learn very quickly to disapprove of me. It's a very grave mistake to be fond of anyone. Why? Oh, before you know it, you become unselfish. Self-sacrificing, all those tiresome things. Well, you remember that. Oh, yeah, I will. And don't you go getting fond of any unnecessary people. Or you can be as fond of us as you like. <laughs> but, oh, please, don't. <laughs> don't what? Or don't go getting married or in jail <laughs> or die or anything. Oh, please. I'll try not to, my pretty one. Dear Lewis. Signore Fritz. Oh, Roberto, so the master's gone. How terrible. Ah, oh, he said he would die, and he did. He's gone, and Miss Kate is gone also. What? Yeah, she has left already for Milano to study the boys. Oh. There are only the three girls left. Fritz. Hey, sir, I read about it in the papers. My heart is broken for you. Oh, thank you very much, Fritz. But Father made us promise never to think of him in tears, and so we don't. And now we can offer you port wine, Napoleon brandy, steak and kidney pie. Oh, I don't know what you mean. We have company. It's our mother's brother from England and his daughter, our cousin. Mr. Charles Crichton and Miss Florence Crichton. Lewis sent them a telegram. He said we were penniless and destined to go to the dogs. They came a week ago. Dog? Is he still here? Out swimming in the lake right now. With cousin Florence. Oh. She's musical too, huh? No. She's very beautiful. And Tony. Where's my Tony? 
Tony says she won't go to England or to school. She says she will get a job in the cabaret and listen to all the latest music. Yes, and I tell you she will not. I'm going to marry her. <laughs> oh, that'll be lovely, Fritz. Yes, don't forget the flowers. Fritzie, Paula. Yes, Fritzie, Paula's here. Oh, hello, Fritzie. <laughs> Tony's around somewhere just here. Yeah. You hunt for her and Paul and I'll hunt for flowers. And where will you hunt for flowers? Down by the lake. Uh -huh. And if you bump into Uncle Charles, don't let him frighten you. He's very big and very ugly. He's also very nice. There they are, Tessa, look. Oh, she's beautiful. She is beautiful. But she's so sure about everything. Do you think she's sure of you? I wouldn't be surprised if she bewitched him. Poor oh, Tessa. Shh. She sees it. Hey, now, what are you talking about so terribly swimming at this? Oh, hello, Florence. Did you find any primula? Well, no. But after breakfast, I'm sure. I can't wait to take your children back to England to buy you some decent clothes. Well, I'm afraid, Florence, we don't know yet whether we're sure we want to go to England. <laughs> and I'm not so sure that you aren't too young to know what's good for you. Well, you see, Florence, we're too young for some things and we're too old for others. It just happens that we're in between, you know? I know. I've been through that stage. Hi. Have you been behaving, girls? Really, Lois, sometimes you can be very pompous. Oh. I hope that's put you in your place, Lois. I think we should go and get the flowers. Get plenty of flowers and put them in some moss in the middle of the table. Yes, we know. Come on. What's the matter, Lou? You have a funny look on your face. Funny? You're a fool. The fool is wondering. Well, from what I've heard of musicians, you're all the same. Just a little off the earth. Mm, I've come to the earth, suddenly. You like it? Hmm? Do I like you? I don't mean that. I meant being on the earth out of your clouds. Oh, I do. I do like it very much. But I would like to take you back to my clouds with me. When do you leave, sir? At your word. This is becoming very pretty and very gallant. No, I mean it very much. You must have had a great success with this approach. <laughs> no, I've had no success whatever. Poor Lewis. I'm not going to attempt to believe you. But what woman could resist a trip to the clouds with someone as... Hmm? <laughs> I'm stumped. Oh, you mean that someone wanted to kiss you the minute you got off that train? To kiss? A beautiful woman saw the train to rescue some little girls, and a poor musician wants to take her into his arms and kiss her. And they lived happily ever after. You know they could. I swear they could. They will, I think. What? Live happily. Florence. Why do you think I stayed up here this whole week? I don't know. Why? Tell me. I want to hear. I wanted to find my way up to you in your cloud. I feel I'm not exactly the cloudy type. I didn't know my way until you told me. You're so real, so definite. Is that what you like? That's what I love. Yes. Oh, Tessa, darling. Breakfast is ready and Uncle Charles is screaming for your history. Oh, I'm sorry, Lewis. I... Eh? Come here. Let Uncle Charles scream a minute longer. Tessa, you shall be the first to hear the news. Florence and I are going to get married. Yes, Lewis. Well, is that all you have to say? Just yes, Lewis? Yes, but... I don't know what to say. Come now. Such a sad little thing. Lewis, we had better get to the house. And on the way, I'm sure Tessa will think of something very nice and very proper to say to us. Yes, like, uh, well, like, I hope you two will be very happy. And we shall, Louis. Yes. I hope you two will be very happy. Oh, Tessa! Please go. I'll be back later. And now, in the few moments before Mr. DeMille and our stars Charles Boyer, Alexis Smith, and Maureen O'Sullivan return in Act Two of The Constant Nymph, let's hear what happened to Nancy. Say, is that Nancy over there? <laughs> no, it can't be. You mean that girl in blue dancing in the corner? Why, yes, that's Nancy. Don't you recognize her? Recognize her? I should say not. She looks stunning. And that chap with her, isn't that... Why, sure it is, the Navy lad she was so crazy about. Well, he's sunk now, that's certain. Well, it's Nancy, all right. Haven't you heard what happened? I just don't want to go, that's all. What's the use? Oh, gee, Nancy, I know how you feel. When the fellow you go for just doesn't go for you, it hurts. But there's still hope, Nancy. Honest, there is. Now that you really want to be pretty, you can be. You just wait and see. <laughs> That a girl, Nancy. Your hair looks so much better all fluffed out like that. That blue dress is perfect with your eyes. There. Didn't I tell you? Those Lux Soap facials are doing the trick. Well, your complexion's improved already. It's softer and smoother. You look loads prettier. Nancy. 
Because she is only one of many girls who have found it pays to give skin the right care. The kind of care that famous screen stars give their million-dollar complexion. Regular active lather facials with Lux Soap. We'll let Nancy tell you about it. It's really fun to take Lux Soap facials, cover your face generously with the rich lather, and then work it in gently but thoroughly. Then rinse with warm water, a splash of cold, and pat dry with a soft towel. Simple, isn't it? But let me tell you, it works. Yes, active lather does a thorough job. Recent tests show three out of four complexions improved with this daily care. Famous screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap. It's mild and pure, as fine a soap as money can buy. It belongs on your shopping list for tomorrow. And if your dealer is out of stock, he's sure to have more soon. Remember, Lux Toilet Soap is worth waiting for. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act two of The Constant Nymph, starring Charles Boyer as Louis Dodd, Maureen O'Sullivan as Tessa, and Alexis Smith as Florence. Charles Crichton and his handsome daughter did not return to England alone. With them came Louis Dodd, now Florence's husband, and Roberto, the servant, and Tessa, and Paula Sanger. The descent from the mountains of Switzerland into English society has been painful to them all. For six months, the girls have done their best to resist manners and an education in a fashionable school. While in the magnificent Crichton home in London, Florence bravely tries to understand the stranger she has married. Florence, I would like to know how you got it into your head that I am a pianist. Now, darling, of course you're a pianist. I've heard you play your composition with Caroli, so I have Caroli coming tonight to play the piece with you. Well, it's him play alone. Why stick me out there on exhibition? I promised my friends that you play. I will not be told what I must or must not do. I'm not a child. Aren't you behaving like one? If there is one thing in the world I hate, it is your class of upper class. Half-headed, domineering. Now becoming rude. If you hated my class, then why did you... I know, I know. Why did I marry you? Well, you've said that before, and each time you ask, I find it more difficult to answer. Darling, you not dare say such a thing to me. I do dare. I have dare, and it is the blunt truth. Whatever you feel, it's most cruel of you to say such a thing to my face. I love you, Louis. But you dislike the truth. I'm sorry I haven't got the gift for that mental sleight of hand you people call manners. I'll not allow you to say such things to me. Well, then stop me or let me alone. Uh, may I come in? Yes, of course. Good morning, Father. Good morning, my dear. Louis, uh... <clears throat> Robert O. Robert is quite busy there helping with the piano. Yes, I noticed. Two pianos. Robert O. Si, signore. Um, good morning. Uh, good morning. Really, Father, I... Robert O, you don't look happy. Signore, please, I'm Italian. Roberto, signore, Roberto. Robert O. Si, signore. Breakfast O. If you both excuse me, I'll see how they're doing with the decorations. God... I'm very angry. Wherever did you learn to behave like this? This constant brawling with Florence. Where did she learn to believe that she was some superior being? Florence has no such illusion. Well, oh, I, I realize you're a different sort of chap. You have your own ideas about things, and we have ours, and, uh, and, and, and there you are. I don't particularly care for you, Dodd, but Florence, well, naturally, she's a great concern to me. Naturally. And let me tell you. I think that, well, you, you seem to take a certain satisfaction in upsetting her. No. No, no, no I... look. Those people we had to lunch last Thursday. You lunched in the park on a sandwich. You told her you'd rather eat with the birds. Well, now, after all, that is... <laughs> well, you know what I mean. My dear Charles, I will not be run by Florence or anyone else. This time she wants me to become a concert pianist overnight and perform at her party. Oh, I dislike this piano business intensely myself. But, well, she's devoted to you, my boy. I know that. You're, you're the first and only one, and she's a woman. And a very charming one. Well, it easily might be that I'm the one that's wrong. We must do something about it right away. Good boy. Now, don't lean over the other way too much either, or she'll take the bit in her teeth. <laughs> I see. Well, thank you very much, Charles. No, not at all, my boy. Not at all. <laughs> Well, here's your piano. I hope it's in tune. Oh, it's very nice. You're nice. Do I always seem to get my own way? Well, I see no reason why you shouldn't. Oh, I want them all to know you. Like you. I'm very proud of you, Louis. You can't blame me, mm -hmm. can you? Well, in that case, I shall play from the heart. <laughs> Strange man. <laughs> <laughs> 
Who is that letter from? Paula. Oh, Paula, the girls. Let me see it. Lewis, I'm, I'm losing patience with them. Why? Oh, they're thoroughly spoiled, both of them. <laughs> yes. Uh, when Flora told that we must stay here, our hearts were broken. It is probable that we shall, <laughs> we shall hang ourselves. Because of Tessa's heart, she does not have to play hockey. I do. While she goes off and thinks of so many things. One thing I know, she wonders, is whether you are having a nice time and like being married. Uh, well, it sounds like a horrid school. Darling, how can you say that horrid school? I was there myself. Well, the girls say it, both of them. They're not liars. Darling, what are we going to do with now? Let them stay where they are. Well, there is Tessa with a bad heart. I'm assured it's not serious, Louis. It's called a valvular lesion. I went into the matter thoroughly. What? Valvular what? Sounds ugly. I don't like it. We, we must get this out with. And send her where? Well, wherever she can stay, just as she is. <laughs> Darling, we have the party tonight, and tomorrow we'll both drive up to the school. Telegram, signore, excuse me. You should bring this on a tray, Roberto. Uh, uh, si, signora. Sanger's sister disappeared this morning. Are they with you? Will not inform police until I hear from you. There, you see? I do see. I'm just going to wash my hands of them, that's all. Well, all right. While you're washing your hands, I'm going to find them. Where? Uh, I'll go to the school first. Darling, will you be enough to phone them there and tell them to advise the police? Louis, I, I'm almost afraid to remind you that we have guests coming tonight. Oh, uh, all right. I'll try to be here, but I'm certainly going to find those children. <laughs> Take that look off your face, Florence. It's an excellent party, in spite of that dreadful woman in there gurgling her head off. Lewis has been gone for hours, Father. And it will be just like him to follow those wretched children back to Switzerland if that's where they've gone. Good heavens. What? Look, there's one of the sisters and that Fritzy chap. It's Tony. Lewis wanted them here, but I do think they'd come all the way from Paris. Oh, well, hello there. I didn't see you come in. Well, you seem very preoccupied, madame, at the door. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, I love parties, and Fritzy loves moving in society, and so we came. We're in a panic. Glad to see you. Your sisters have run away from school or something. And Lewis is out searching for them. Fritzy and I thought they would from their letters. I'm going to have a baby. How oh, nice. Oh, Florence, the panic's over. There's your Lewis. Lewis. I'm sorry, darling. Did you hear anything since I telephoned? Not a word. Hello, Lewis. Oh, Fritz. Oh, Lewis, darling. Hello, Tony. I'm worried to death. What were you able to do? Nothing. I've got Scotland Yard after them now. Darling, will you hurry and change, please? Eh? Oh, yes. Uh, Fritzy, Tony, I'll be down in a minute. We can talk. Lewis. Lewis, darling, please hurry. We're all just waiting and waiting for Lewis, you. Lewis, come in. We have company. They're back, darling. They're here. They signed Paula. Here. Oh, hello, Florence. We do hope we're not in the way. Of course not. Hello, Tessa. Good evening, Florence. I've come to lay my bones among you. Yes, we have it all planned. Tony's written me she's going to have a baby, so I'll go back with her to Paris, and, and Tessa will stay with you. Won't someone tell me where you girls have been? Right in this room for two hours. The better let it in the back door. Anyone would think I was an old ogress. <laughs> Now, Lewis, you must come along. Oh, we've been off our heads all day, haven't we, Florence? I imagine you dead on the trains, hanging from trees. I could not bear it. We'll go down now. I'll send you up something to eat. Oh, thank you, son. We'll start. And I shall play for you, sweet Florence, as I've never played before. What are you going to play? It's called Tomorrow, a symphonic poem. It was a song, remember? Uh -huh. Even you will like it. And pretty soon, a concert in Regent's Hall. Are we listen now? But I shall be most hurt if you don't. From up here, though. And please don't be angry. We just couldn't turn that school another moment. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lewis Dodd. In performance of an original composition assisted by Mr. Enrico Caroli. Those two mysterious little spiders sitting on your stairs. Hmm? Oh, my nieces from Switzerland. Hardly spiders, though. Butterflies. Prettier. Much. Robert O. Shh. Si, signore. Get me a drink. Si, signore. It's a wonder to me that the piano stands up under that pounding. Perhaps, signore, that is why they have two pianos. That's not what he said he'd play. There's no melody. No feeling. It's just rhythm. 
What a long way from tears. Tears? Father said Lewis would be great only if he could cry or suffer. <laughs> I suppose this is a form of suffering. Oh, don't joke. He's forgotten his heart again. He did remember it once. And then Florence came along and he lost it again. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean. It's his music. But what can you do about it? Nothing. Lewis has really gone somewhere. Lewis has gone. <laughs> if I come in. I won't bother you for long. Florence said you were working, and I'm so glad. Now, now, Tessa, if you have a bad heart, why do you insist upon always dashing upstairs uh, like this? I just saw Paul over the station with Tony. Mm. Fritz is going to stay till after your concert. Lewis, is it really on the 28th? Mm-hmm. Are you excited? Not a bit. I don't blame you. But what? It's only my opinion. Your opinion of what? You know what I mean. Oh. <laughs> you mean this? <laughs> Oh, you really took them by storm last night. Ah, they were amateurs. Ask Tessa here what she thinks of it. She's a musician. Oh, and what is your opinion, Tessa? Well, it was very loud and very defiant. I suppose some people would pretend to like it, even if they didn't understand. You didn't understand it, Tessa? I don't think Lewis did either. Once it was very beautiful, Florence. And then he must have become ashamed of it and hid it under a lot of noise. Bankety, bankety, bang. He's in such deathly terse sentiment. But the melody is here. Oboes, listen. A few measly bars. Really, Lewis, I wonder you have the patience. Oh, let's change the subject. Tessa, I've decided upon a new school for you. No, no, the school for Tessa is out of the question. What are we going to do with then, Lewis? Well, find out what her instinct is about this music of mine. Lewis, you wouldn't think of changing. If it's wrong, certainly. But your concert's in two weeks. But, Florence, you don't think I would have it performed knowing it wasn't right. But it is right. You worked so steadily and so seriously. Perhaps too steadily and too seriously. That may be right. Why, of course, Tessa, Tessa will you speak when you're spoken to? Then will you please not lose your temper? Oh, I started this. I'm sorry. All right, all right. Uh, Florence, if you don't mind, I'd like to, to think a little. Of course, darling. And we'll go for a walk, Tessa, and talk about you and what we shall do. No, no, as a matter of fact, I'd like Tessa to stay here. I want to talk to her about the music. Will that be all right, Florence? Certainly. I think this gardenia would be very appropriate, Miss. It's for Mr. Dodd, the composer, you know. His concert is tonight at Regent's Hall. May I wrap it for you? Please. Uh, Fritzy, what are you sending? Roses. Four dozen roses for Florence. Oh, oh, Fritzy, you're sweet. Look, wouldn't it be fun if you sent the flowers to Florence and Lewis? She'd be so pleased. Oh, fine. I'll send orchids from Tony and... Oh, no, 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 no. That would take all the glass off the gingerbread. Let's just send these, Fritzy, from Lewis. All right. What shall I write on the card? Oh, write it in kind of untidy handwriting like his. <laughs> uh, to dear, kind Florence. No, no, to dear, dear, patient Florence. With all my love, Lewis. To dear, dear... No, just say love. Dear, dear, patient Florence. Love, Lewis. Another card. No, no, he wouldn't say that. Yeah? Just say, dear, patient Florence. Lewis. Oh, thank you, Fritz. And Fritz, be sure to tell Lewis so he knows. What a family I've married into, you sang. Yes, sir. That you? Come in here. Five o'clock and this place is like the Sahara. Here, now, you come and pour me a cup of tea. I'd love to. What? Well, what's the matter? A bit sick. <laughs> All right, nothing. It's tonight. Our Lewis's name. Advertised on all the sandwich boards. All over town. Oh, well. Oh, now, now, what's that? My dress. Fritzy bought it from Tony. I won't look such a child in this, will I? Don't you call yourself a child, young woman. Oh, my darling uncle. Can't I marry you? <laughs> and you'd have me whacking away that silly piano all day, <laughs> just as you do that extraordinary son-in-law of mine. <laughs> well, he is extraordinary and very, very tired. Oh, hello, Florence. Who's tired? Lewis. He was working until 2 this morning, then rehearsed again at 11. Oh, you have your tea, Father? Yes, yes. Um, all arranged for tonight? Yes, mm -hmm. we're going to the Savoy. And Florence, speaking of the Savoy, I was wondering how you like this dress? Fritz carried it all the way from Paris. Fritz? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought I heard his voice in the studio. Well, if they want their tea, they'd better come now. It's getting late. I've sent for Lewis twice. I'll get him. Take sweet. She'll get him. If she hasn't already. 
Lawrence, let me tell you. If you care anything about this husband of yours, you'd better stop mooning about like a woman in a novel. You have little Tessa on the defensive for him. I heard it just now. I dislike her intensely. Yes, and you make that quite obvious to all and sundry. There's some sort of strange language between them that only they themselves can understand. I feel like a stranger in my own house. He said quite casually to me today that he might go off away alone after the concert. What? Go away. I, I hardly see him anymore. Lewis is the only man I ever truly cared for or ever will care for. It's some sort of a strange, slow process of defeat. She's either very innocent or very clever. If you don't stop hammering away at it, you'll force Lewis to make a bolt for it. You'll see. Now, you don't want him to bolt, do you? That's my nightmare. I'm so afraid of that. I couldn't stand it. Poor Florence. You always had your own way. Won everything you wanted all along the line. Now, if you have to be a loser... Yes. Don't worry, Father. I won't lose. I won't lose. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. In just a few moments, Mr. DeMille and our stars Charles Boyer, Alexis Smith, and Maureen O'Sullivan will return in Act Three of The Constant Nymph. And now for a moment, let's look in at a famous Hollywood studio. There's a rehearsal going on, a big dance ensemble. All right, girls, no mistakes. Now keep it lively and look happy. One, two, three, four, head, right, head, left. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Oh, my, so this is Hollywood. I'm dead. I ache in every muscle. <laughs> you poor kid. It is tough at first. Tell you what, let's go over to my place. It's right near. I'll fix up a bite to eat. Here we are. Now, I'll start the food going. But first, I'll let you in on a Hollywood beauty secret. There's plenty of warm water, and here's a fresh cake of Lux soap. Take yourself a nice, relaxing beauty bath... And by the time supper's ready, you'll feel like a brand new girl. Well, Sue found her hostess knew what she was talking about. Say, I feel simply swell now. You're right. There's something so refreshing about that Luxo lather. It leaves nice, delicate fragrance on your skin, too. Now, there's a tip for women everywhere. You'll find that Hollywood's complexion soap, Lux Toilet Soap, makes a delightful bath soap, too. The active lather is wonderfully rich and creamy. It carries away dust and dirt. Leave skin feeling soft, velvety smooth. And most important of all, lovely screen stars say Lux Toilet Soap protects daintiness. Makes you sure of skin that's fresh and sweet. Try Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow. It's hard milled to last. That's important these days when it's patriotic not to waste soap. Lux Toilet Soap lasts even longer, too, if you'll always put it in a soap dish that's dry. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. We'll take you behind the scenes with our stars after the play. But now here's the curtain for the third act of The Constant Nymph, starring Charles Boyer, Alexis Smith, and Maureen O'Sullivan. It's two hours before the concert, and the florist has just delivered four dozen roses addressed to Mrs. Lewis Dodd. Florence is genuinely moved. So is Fritz Berkeley, but... In not the same way. Tessa, Tessa, I forgot. I forgot to tell you. Fred, oh, how beautiful. Oh, you know I'm very jealous, darling. Who's been sending you flowers? You. Come, come, no secret. Lewis, I forgot. Eh? Madame, I have to explain. Oh, I... it was really my fault. What is... You see, Florence, Fritzy brought some flowers for Lewis to give to you. And then he forgot to tell Lewis. Oh, but... ye yes, of course. Of course, I did ask Fritz if he would be kind enough to... <laughs> oh, darling, you're not cross, are you? Of course not. Although I don't think it's important enough to lie about. I'm so thoughtless and so sorry. Well, you have Tessa to think for you. Oh, Florence, truthfully, it was only an idea and it went wrong. Did Fritz think up the word patient, Florence? No, darling, you are patient. 
And you are altogether too nice to be upset. Tonight of all nights. You won't recognize the music tonight, Fritzy. Huh, has it been changed? Well, it's a little quieter, perhaps. And I have developed the melody. Oh, this was really quite a help. No, but it does have more heart in it now. And you're familiar with Lewis's heart? Oh, Florence, please. Oh, I appreciate it, if that's what you mean. But I suppose I always have. You have to excuse me. It's time we all got dressed, isn't it? Goodbye. I'll see you all at the concert. I am a fool. Such a fool. Ah, oh, these constant irritations. Little things suddenly assuming such importance until I find myself becoming little too. And I'm ashamed. Oh, don't say that. I don't want to hear it. Then you know what I mean. No, I don't. I won't know. I don't want to know. Tessa, are you crying? Look at me, Tessa. I cry when I think of you and of poor Florence. And because we're talking now things that we shouldn't talk about, I feel so guilty. Of what? Because you are sweet and unspoiled and you love the truth? No, don't turn away. Look at me. Oh, Louis. Hmm. Is it me? Are you disturbed about me? Of course, of course I am. <laughs> little Tessa. Such a little Tessa. Such an insignificant, mutant little Tessa. I think I've known it always. And yet, why didn't I know it? Whatever you think you know, you must forget you must forget it now. I love you, Tessa. <gasps> I know I always have. Once long ago, I said something to Father. I said, one day Lewis will look at me, and then everything will be all right. And I didn't look. There were other things to see. That was all. Please don't talk about it. It's too late now. No. Please. No, it isn't. Why did you marry Florence? I don't know now. We were so mad together that you forgot all about me. Oh, if you'd only waited a little while. No, it was something I didn't realize. Can you understand that? How can I not understand you? You've been in my mind all the time. You've never really been away from me. Tessa. I promised myself to you such a long time ago. My darling. Oh, no, no. Florence is my cousin, and I've been living in her home. She's been kind, and you belong to her. But if it weren't for that, I'd... Oh, no, I can't. I won't. I'd be a traitor. I can't, Lou. I can't. Louis? Oh, come in, dear. Blanche, I want to talk with you. I'm very sorry about the roses, Louis. But I thought you'd sent me some flowers. Oh, darling, I know so well how you must have felt. And do you know how I feel now that you're going away? Louis, I'll go anywhere. Be anything, do anything in the world you ask. Oh, Florence, me. I can't let you say things like this. I mean it. I'm honest and I love you. The fact that I haven't completely understood you hasn't been all my fault because I've tried. And all the time I've had the feeling that I was succeeding bit by oh, bit. But you're attractive. You're young. You deserve so much more than I can ever be to you. You're giving me up. Oh, please. You can't put it that way. All right. That you don't want me anymore. Give me another chance. I'm begging you. Look at me. No. Don't tell me what's in your mind just now. I don't think I could stand it. You're going away for a while. You might miss me. I'll wait for you. Will you do me a favor while I'm gone? Anything. It's about Tessa. If I can only be sure that, well, that, that you two are good friends, that you understand her. Yes. Well, don't look like that. When have you loved her so deeply? Always, I think. Have you told her? Does she know? Yes, and she will have none of me. She spoke of you immediately. That's why I'm asking you to try and understand what she's really like. Don't ask me to try and understand. I do. Don't you dare suggest... I do dare. I tell you she will have nothing to do with me, ever, because of you. I don't believe it. Oh, don't even think such a thing about a child. Don't call her a child. It makes it even more contemptible. I put the thought away again and again because I felt that no matter what she was, you, you at least were decent. Signora, Signora. I told you to go to the concert. See, si, see, si, I know, I know. But, but Tessa, she's, she's sick. But I found her on the stairs, Signora. She fainted, I think. I'll go to her, Florence. Will you call a doctor, please? No, I'll go. Please, Dennis. If it's anything, I'll call you. Hello, darling. I thought you were ill. Oh. Is it a stupid dizzy spell? Excitement of tonight? Yes. The excitement of so many. 
Lie down quietly, and I'll have Dr. Tomlin come in and see you. What's the matter, Florence? You know, I should never have come here, really. Don't you think if I went away and got some sort of a job in Paris, don't you think that would be better? Did you know that Lewis was leaving, too? Yes, but not the Paris. And you promptly got to go away. Such a fragile little girl. So innocent. I'm talking to you now as one woman to another. I'm accusing you directly. You flung yourself at my husband in this house and you succeeded. I can't help it if I love Lewis. I did long before you came to Switzerland. But I, I've come to understand that he's your husband. And I'm not going to see him anymore. That's the reason I want to go away. You talk of love as if you know what it means. Oh, yes, I do. I know all about it. What do you mean by that? What do you mean? Florence, please. Tessa. Tessa, Tessa. Tessa, you all right. Tessa. Shouldn't you be going now? In me? Please lie down. Yes, I will. Only don't be late for the concert. I'm just tired. That's all. I have some smelling salts. I'll bring them in here in case you... Thank you, Florence. Florence asked me to bring this in. What's the matter, darling? What happened? A few flutterings inside. Nothing to worry about. I know all about my valvular nipples. <laughs> you're sure you're all right? I will be, if you'll only go. You're not coming. These spells of mine behave in the most embarrassing way sometimes. I could so easily have one in the middle of a performance. Anyway, Roberto and I can listen to it on the radio. Well, then give me a moment. Our music is last on the program. Our music. Oh, sweet, generous Lewis. <laughs> There's no one like you in all the world. I'll miss you so. Why would you miss me? Because I... I may possibly be going away, too. Where? Anywhere. Away from our situation. An impossible situation. I wonder if you know how many things have made it impossible. It isn't just that I am married to Florence. It isn't that you are so young and I'm not. No, it is something that has been with me ever since I was a little boy, hearing strange music and almost anything, you know. Yes. Everything, anything that came into my mind was never quite of this earth. Until, until tonight. Oh. Yes, downstairs, when I looked at you, everything that I ever longed for seemed to be there for me. Yes. You must go now. I'll be thinking of you. Please go, Lord. Please. I want you to. I'll come straight back. Aren't you going away? You said you were. I'm coming back. Harry. Bless you. Beloved. Bless you. my boy. Something very noisy by a German. It's given me a slight head. It's next, Lewis. Your music. Tomorrow. Where were you, darling? Mm, oh, I, I walked here. Yeah. Well, my boy, horses are leaving the paddock. The sands are packed. Your hands are like ice. I don't wonder. Even I'm nervous. Success, Lewis. Thank you. much of it. Sit down here by the radio. Tessa, where are you going with your bags packed and your coat on? To Paris. Paris. I better fix you something to eat. Shh. Thanks. This is a bad house. A bad house. Tessa, I've been calling you. Yes, Louis. You wanted me to call you. I've waited so long. You'll never leave me. Never. Never. You belong to me. You always have. Even before I was born. Look. That song. It frightens me. You must be 
must never be afraid. You must be protected, always. Protected? My heart is such a simple heart. Isn't there some protection? Yes, you have such a wisdom about things. Have I? Poor, poor Lewis. You've never really been happy, have you? Perhaps I have no no way to find it. Will you show me, Tessa? If there is a way, you will know it. Father said, if Lewis could ever suffer, I'll cry. Lewis! Lewis! Bessa? Bessa? Quiet, darling. She's probably resting. But where's everyone? The servants. Roberto! Louis, look at me, please. Darling, I can't go on another moment with you. Charles, how can I possibly hate you? Because I said unkind things, wicked things. I couldn't help it. Can you understand? Of course I can understand. I'm not going to stand in your way another moment. And I want to tell Tessa my story. May I? Why, it's a sudden change. Because I love you. And I want you to be happy. Oh, this is all my fault, Laura. I'm the guilty one. How can you possibly be guilty? People don't arrange these things. Something else does. I realized it tonight, watching you in the park, hearing it in the music. I just happen to exist outside your inner world, and tell you. I understand it very clearly. And you must never be sorry for me. We're friends. All of us are. Always. Always, Laura. Thank you, Louis. Well, darling, I'll run along with the boy. Join us if you can. Oh, Roberto, I heard you call before, Signore. I did not come. Whose bags are those? They're Tessa's. Her, yes. Where is she? Here. She's going away? She has gone away, signore. She... Roberto. Where? Where? She's lying there. <laughs> Tessa! Little Tessa. This was another evening of fine performances in the Lux Radio Theater, given by Charles Boyer, Alexis Smith, and Maureen O'Sullivan. Thank you very much, C.B., and it's always a pleasure to work with you. Now that flesh and fantasy has reached the screen, you're a producer yourself, Charles. Does it make you nervous to have a producer as a star, Mr. DeMille? <laughs> Not nearly so nervous as Charles would be if I were acting for him. <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, but that's, uh, that's an idea, C.B. Uh, just what uh, would your, your price be as an actor? Well, I'd say about... Uh... No, that's too much. <laughs> you have a great future as a producer, Charles. <laughs> well, you can't blame a man for trying to get a bargain. It's rather like a woman when she sees some Lux soap. She can't resist it. Naturally, not after she's tried it once. I've used Lux soap for a long time myself. I couldn't get along without it. Well, two such lovely customers can't be wrong. And we know Lux soap isn't. Alexis, I've been wondering uh, how you came to have such an unusual name. Like Smith? No, like Alexis. My father's name is Alexander, and that didn't seem quite right for a girl, so we got as close to it as possible. Oh, I thought it might be Russian. No. One of my grandfathers was a gold miner in South Africa, and the other was a gold miner in Alaska. Huh. I rather think you've made a bigger strike in Hollywood than either of them. <laughs> and we've made one for next week. 
What is your play going to be, Mr. DeMille? A thrilling drama with a thrilling cast, Maureen. It's the Warner Brothers hit, Casablanca. And our stars will be Hedy Lamar, Alan Ladd, and John Loder. <laughs> we'll go behind the scenes in the city that came famous overnight. A city of intrigue and mystery and sudden death. Next Monday night, you'll hear Hedy Lamar in the role of a beautiful refugee. And Alan Ladd and John Loder as the two men in love with her. Well, I don't see how you can miss with that one, CB. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> we'll have to see more of you soon. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Alan Ladd, Hedy Lamar, and John Loder in Casablanca with Edgar Barrier. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. And now a message from our government to every housewife. There is an urgent need for more glycerin, a vital ingredient of the sulfur drugs and of many other medicines now used on our fighting front. Glycerin can only be made from fat. Save every single drop of waste fat from your kitchen. Think of it. One tablespoonful of used fat will supply the glycerin necessary for 73 smallpox inoculations. So urgent is the need for this life-saving ingredient that two ration points, the kind that buy meat, shortening, butter, and cheese, will be given you for every single pound of fat turned in. In addition, your butcher will pay you four cents a pound for it. Here's what you do. Pour all used fat into a clean tin can. Don't use glass or paper containers. Just as soon as the container is full, rush it to your butcher and receive your ration points and payment at the rate of four cents a pound. Here's something very real, very necessary, absolutely vital you can do. Don't fail our fighting men. Start saving those used fats tomorrow. Alexis Smith is co-starring in the forthcoming Warner Brothers hit, The Adventures of Mark Twain. Charles Boyer is currently seen in Universal's all-star picture, Flesh and Fantasy, of which Mr. Boyer was co-producer with Julian de Bivier. Heard in tonight's play were Walter Kingsford as Charles, Pedro de Cordoba as Sanger, Louis Alberni as Roberto, Dwayne Thompson as Kate, Joan Loring as Paula, Trudy Marson as Tony, Hans Conrad as Fritz, and Norman Field, Gloria Gordon, and Charles Field. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas by international shortwave radio through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, Reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Hedy Lamar, Alan Ladd, and John Loder in Casablanca with Edgar Barrier. Know what they're all saying? Your ration points go farther, go further, go farther. Your ration points go farther, further when you're cooking with fries. Yes, ma'am, fries are shortening by. For fried food. Mmm. Cake. Mmm. And pie. Mm -hmm. It's got to be fried. Mm -hmm. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>